right, we're sort of getting close to being done with John 6. And we're finding out more and more <clears throat> about um, the Father in this situation. In other words, uh, it was a progression in John 6. It began on when Passover was getting near. Jesus was teaching a multitude, 5,000, not counting uh, women and children, had gathered to hear him. Uh, he fed them. Um, and, uh, and then their motives came out, and Jesus addressed them. And it started Jesus off on really talking about what the true Passover is. <clears throat> and... Um, um, and the manner in which it is to be partaken. Uh, and he, he has been progressively showing more and more and more uh, this, that his place in this um, as broken bread, as, you know, uh, eat my flesh and drink my blood, really has to do with the Father that it's not just something he's talking about doing for salvation or whatever, but he keeps bringing up the Father. And so this causes us, this should cause us <laughs> to begin to look elsewhere than the regular theological ruts that we have in our brains. <clears throat> um, and... Um, and so what we're trying to discover here is we're trying to allow the Holy Spirit to show us Jesus' place in bringing this about for the Father and Jesus' heart, not just Jesus' place. He is, he is placed as the mediator or more clearly the vehicle of bringing this about that we be found in Son and that we be found um, uh, well, drawing from that nature and that, that heart towards the Father. And so uh, let's look at verse uh, 45 now. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God, every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. All right, so this is, a, this is an interesting wording. I mean, uh, from start to finish, it's an interesting wording because he basically uh, he starts with, it is written in the prophets. <laughs> I don't know, does anybody see the... The humor in this. It's written in the prophets that you're not going to get it from the prophets. <laughs> Everyone must be taught of God. Isn't that interesting? I mean, I find it interesting. I find it interesting that, that um, what is written is the scriptures. What is received is the living word. And that doesn't come just from the scriptures. I mean, let's put it this way. The script, we must, I believe we must search the scriptures. And um, there's plenty of, of proof to that and plenty of Jesus pointing to that. Um, but, but the scriptures in themselves will not do it. You, you know, the Pharisees knew the scriptures inside and out. It won't do it. It's not going to get it. It doesn't hack it. But... If you go to the scriptures, Jesus said, search the scriptures, for they are they which testify of me. But your problem is you won't come to me in the scriptures that you might have life. And that's the, not, not that you might know scriptures, that you might be theologically sound, that, you might, that, that this is an issue of life to him. And we'll get into that eventually. Not, not very far down the road, actually. Um, so... What is written and what the prophets have put down for us still is not enough because they're telling us, they're telling us 
and they shall all be taught of God, every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned. Okay? So there's something that you must hear, and there's something that you must learn, and it's not just the scriptures, it's coming from God. All right, so every man shall be taught of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is God. See? And there's something that we can learn from God. All right, so here's, here's, our, here's us. Here we go. We're so carnal. We go, okay, God, teach me. Okay, God, teach me then. I'm with it. I'm ready, to, I'm ready to go with whatever you got. That's not what it's saying. It's saying, God, if you watch God, if you, if you observe, if you hear, if you, there's, there are things that you can learn of God that are meant to, and, and what, what is it, you know, what is it? Is he going to speak? No, he's not going to speak. I mean, you look, at, you look at God from heaven, especially in the New Testament. He doesn't speak very often, but when he does, he speaks of his son. But then that's the Father speaking. Yeah. This is my beloved son. Well, who's that? Holy Spirit. No, that's the Father. See? And I got news for you. Um, like, you go through the book of Acts, you listen to those guys. They, they heard something, and they learned something of God. And they can identify scriptures, Old Testament scriptures, and they'll say, and the Holy Spirit said this, and the Father said this, and the Son said this. It's like they learned of God without God teaching them. You see what I mean? Teaching, verbally teaching. But they saw that the Father works this way, and the Spirit works this way, and the Son works this way, and it all is this wonderful thing called oneness one god is one amen god is one but god is not only one he also works through oneness and to do that requires that there be at least three in one <laughs> in that in that sense because there because you can't you can't love without anybody else around I mean, for example, uh, let me just say if you were, somehow you were born on a, a island nobody ever heard of and, you know, you grew up to just, you know, you, an infant crawling around and your parents died and you don't remember them and then you grow up and then, you know, there's nothing you can love. There's nothing you know of the earth. There's no one you know. You don't remember your parents. The only one left to love is yourself. And that's not God. God is love. And that's not God. That's contrary to God. Now, I know, you know, psychology and all of that stuff tells you you need to love yourself, you know. And most of you do love yourself. -y. <clears throat> but to love, to love the way that God is requires there be another. Okay? So, not to go into all of that, but just to, to set the stage that um, within this realm, Jesus is talking now, I mean, because he's saying that this, was, this is written in the scriptures by the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. And then, but he's sitting there as God talking about want to satisfy the Father, and it's not about his will. And he's not going to do this for his own sake. And he is not I, but the Father. Not my will, but the Father. And this is, this is a spirit that is within God that is not selfish. There's not a, it's, it's pure. 
It's pure. But it's not, you know, again, we always say, you know, well, I want to be pure, and what we're trying to talk about is, you know, never mess up and never say anything bad and never, you know, um, the pure shall see God. The pure shall see God. And when, when the heart turns to the Lord or when you are no longer selfishly seeking, even if it's for God, see, but it's selfish because you are, you seek to attain to something instead of, because Jesus was not attaining to something. Uh, what, what verse was it? For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will. This is not, this is not attaining. This is literally losing everything so the Father would gain. See. Well, okay, now let's just be honest. <clears throat> How many people in Christianity are willing to decrease that he might increase? Now, oh no, I'm, I used the wrong scripture because we all know that one, so we all agree with that. How many of us are willing to it not be about you, but about him? Not be your will pushing it. Your will making it happen. Not I, but the Father. Okay? All right. But is there not, if it's not I, you can't say then that you're non existent. You can't. Because not I, but the Father proves that somebody's still there. And that somebody is a not I person. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? I mean, it really is, because it's a, you know, because we always, well, not I means I'm, I'm non-existent, and I'm da 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 Well, on that front, you are totally dead. That's the point. That's the point of the cross, that you be totally dead on that front. But by taking on his spirit and his nature, there is a place where in ministry, where in um, the way that you think, because ministry is, see, ministry is nothing but the construction of the way that you think. Am I right or wrong? It is. It's just the construction of the way you think. But, but think you, the way you think goes beyond ministry. So we don't, we don't need to wrestle with trying to fix ministry or ministry views. We need to wrestle with with coming to a point where I love God, to them that love God, I love God and I love him more than myself and I say yes to the cross. All right, in some cases that may be one yes at a time, you know. Every, you know, every day might be 50 yeses <laughs> or 100 or 1,000. But, but for you, until that nature is formed to such a degree that it actually has control and you don't, I mean, because you've given, you've relinquished that. You, you didn't, you weren't robbed of your free will. You used your free will not to use it for yourself. Well, who is sufficient for these things? Well, see, and here's the, here's the kicker. See that thing about love and God? Remember last class we read, you know, I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for those who love him. That thing about loving God, that's us. But it's us in union with Christ, too. But there has to be, there's this place. There is this place where you make the leap where you love God and you say, I want this, even though I realize um, that there's loss involved or death involved or all that kind of stuff. I want this. But <clears throat> I must tell you that even at the point, that point in time where we come to that, there is mixture. But that's okay because... You know, I, yeah, I've told this a long time ago, but when I was in Bible school, uh, 
I was seeking the revelation of Christ. I wanted, I wasn't seeking Christ, I was seeking the revelation of Christ, but I, I want, you know, I knew that this, this was it. I, my spirit bore witness, this is it, man. This is, there's no other reason to live. I knew that. So I, I said, I just said to the Lord, I said, you know, but, you know, I, I know, I'm asking you to reveal, Holy Spirit, the Son in me. And Father, I want the Son revealed in me. But I realize that I'm, you know, I'm probably asking this selfishly. Because there was mixture in me. Part of it was, you know, there was mixture. And, and he said back to me, oh, that's all right. Just keep on going. When he's revealed in you, there won't be any more left. <laughs> and I went, oh, well, that was easy. You know, it's always much easier when he speaks than our, our, our mind, our fears, our, you know, monsters and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, Mallory. Right. In him, and it's part of it's like we don't fill the shoes of the calling, even at the moment that we say, "Okay, the seed is there, but the fullness is not working in us at all." It's just right. part of the journey, and the mixture is there at the beginning. You know. Right. <clears throat> so I mean, there is that. There is that. What What you need to understand is there is a point in time where you, out of a love, even if it's not as big as your fears, you say, I want this. I want this Jesus. I, you know, I can't say I want everything that I think is going to happen because most of that is our own fears. It is. Yeah. And our own viewpoints of what we think we're getting into. But that's why there has to be a, a degree of purity that says, I want you. And if you can, like a horse, if you can put on blinders and just try to keep looking at him and don't look, remember the scriptures, don't neither look to the right nor to the left, but look right on. Right on, brother. Put the blinders on and keep as much as you can focused on the goal. Press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in union with him. Then the, the, the fears will be thrown out. And what brought all this on was that I said, well, we think that to, to really get into the Lord in this way, it's going to bring about a total non-existence of me and it's just going to be him. But that can't be true if God's looking for Christ in you. There has to be a you. Right? Christ in, Christ in nothing, the hope of glory. See, that's not right. No. God made you. God gave you the personality that you have. And he's fine with that. See, he's not as freaked out about that as maybe you are. I'm not freaked out about the one he gave me. <laughs> rather, I rather enjoy it anyway. Um, but I mean, he's not trying. There's, you know, there's stuff he's not trying to change. Um, when it comes to the old nature, yes, that must be crucified. But when it comes to you with Christ in you, what a joy! That's one of the sons, whether male or female. That's one of the sons. Then. And, and, you know, we always say this thing, well, there's nobody else like you. Well, amen, thank God. <laughs> Let's just rejoice in that, you know. <laughs> but, but at the same time that we're different, we're all the same because the same is Jesus. The, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was with God. And when he's in us, the living word, it's the same. It's the same. It's the same son that pleases the father, that the father loves. And he'll love you in spite of your flaws. I mean, haven't you ever wondered about this? That, that uh, you know, he, 
He kept us. I mean, he didn't wipe us out and just keep the angels. He kept us. And the scriptures talk about him loving us. And not only that, I mean, like Ephesians 5 is not talking about a death for sin. It says he loved us and gave himself for us. And it's talking about a, as a bride. It's, it's, describing, it's describing the true relationship that he wanted out of it. It's not about perfection. It's not about that, oh, I'm, I do everything that, that he likes. I, you know, I, I'll tell you this. I would hate being married to a woman that was basically a spitting clone of me. Just me. Like, I'd be like being in love with yourself. Right? I mean, it'd be, you know. You know. But... It'd be, it'd be, yeah, it would be. But, but, what, but what happens is he gives us something, and this is, this is him. This is, we have to always go back to him. We, we, we never just, there are no concepts outside of him. And he loves us even with our flaws and stuff. He could fix all of that, you know, and just manifest it where there's not anything but he just still loves us, you know? And I think a lot of the things that we do that we mess up on, and even some of our little freakouts, he kind of smiles instead of going, you know, get over it! That's kind of what we think he's like sometimes. But he's just going, you know, I think that's kind of cute. Because it's not going to be around forever. You know, and we're, we're oh, I just, I'm so sorry, Lord, you know, we're crying, and our lips are all red and everything, and he just looks at us and goes, you know, he probably wouldn't say it to us, <laughs> you know, but we're just, oh, Lord, you know, and he's looking, just, he's just enjoying that, you know what I mean? <laughs> Some people, they just look cuter when they cry. Well, the Lord, the Lord. He's there, whatever the issues are, he's either taken care of it as a foundation, which he has on all fronts, or he has us already in him, and it's just a matter of time as we grow up in him in all things. So there's, you know, so all of, you know, flighty or this or that or fears or all that kind of stuff, that's fine. I, <clears throat> I, I, I still do a lot of counseling. <clears throat> I do. And one of the most common things is people freaking out. And even recently, someone was sharing with me, you know, their freakouts, and I was, I was just smiling on the inside because I knew that this, this too shall pass. You know, but when you're younger and you don't know, it's like, oh, am I going to end up in hell? Will, will I become the bride of Satan? <laughs> 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 Maybe a Frankenstein, but not Satan. <clears throat> so, I got off on all that just to say, you know, that... Um, you know, just if, if you, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you shall know the truth. He didn't say, well, maybe, you know, I don't know, some of you, most of you, but I don't know over this side or something like that. He didn't, that's, no, he says, if you continue in my word, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you. It won't set you free. It'll literally make you from the inside out. It'll make you something. So, um, may confidence in, in him and his heart rise in us. <clears throat> All right, so, um, uh, every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. So there is, there is a hearing and a learning of the Father. Of the Father. And that means for every time that you've prayed, you know, you know God revealed your son, there is a desire 
for the Father that should arise in our hearts that we say that's the one the, Jesus loves. I mean, you know, if you love somebody, don't you love what they love? Mo I mean, even if you don't, there are, there are ways that you are still with them. There are. There are ways that you're still with them. It's, it, you know, it's not like, you know, somebody likes pickles and ice cream. You know, well, you can just go, well, that's just crap. I don't like that stuff. <laughs> you know? Um, but if it's someone you love, then eventually all you care about is you look on their face, what they're eating, and you go, you know, then I like it for you. You know what I mean? Because you're together. You're to There's this thing about witness. There's this thing about being and not just doing together, being, man. And so, so many marriages are, are doing together, but they're not being together, and, and it just wipes out so much. So anyway, so, so Jesus says, come unto me. If you, if you, you know, are going to hear and learn of the Father, then come to me because I will give you my heart. You will see my heart, and I'll put it in you. And the new covenant will not just be, you won't sin anymore. Even if that's written in there, it will be, I'll give you a new heart. <laughs> it's better than just not sinning. See, a new heart, thank God. <clears throat> and so whatever, whatever our true seeking of the Father is about, it always will lead to the Son in a, in a way that that son is now our way to the father. He is our way. And so we're not going, we're not saying, show me the way. We're saying, you're the way, and I'm in you. You've already done that. And I'm believing you to reveal this reality to me and just make it so strong, make it override all the, the, the mechanics and machinery of my own mind and the constructions of my own making that I think are so important. And let me see this flow and let it be a way in me. Remember they said that in the book of Acts. And every, Paul persecuted every one of this way. <laughs> All right, so, verse, so let's jump to verse 51. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Okay, so he is the desire of the Father's heart. But he came down from heaven, and now he's going to become broken bread. Can I put it this way? He's going to become dead bread. Roasted, cooked, whatever. Thrown in the fire. Broken. But he's, he's got a purpose. And it's a love purpose. It's a love purpose. Now you can't beat a love purpose. I'm sorry, you can't beat a love purpose. Um, so, so Jesus, so here's the deal. Jesus is trying to get us, he's trying to get the U.S., I mean us, Amen. to the Father. Okay, so he says in verse 51, I'm the living bread that came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will uh, give is my flesh which I give for the life of the world. Now he's going to explain this even further. And what he's going to fully explain is that this is the way to the Father. This isn't just about him. Do you see that? I mean, even, see, it's one thing if he just said, well, you know, I don't even know how to, put it into words, just follow me and I'll get you to the Father. This is, to get you to the Father requires death. It requires loss. It requires less. It requires weakness. It requires no reputation. It requires that. 
which sure thins the herd, doesn't it? That'll thin the herd. But if it's him in you, you're not going through this alone. You're not going just by your own motives and whatever. You've got something greater. Anybody ever quoted the scripture, greater is he that's in you? Okay. Well, believe it. <laughs> you know, try that. You know, stop quoting it. <laughs> you know, as it is written by the prophets, shut up. <laughs> start, believe, start believing and putting it into action. You know? And so, so he's saying, okay, Yes, there is this, there is, you know, it would be like a, talking to his bride or talking to us. It would be, okay, there is this place where you have to eat my flesh and you have to take, take in my life. The life is in the blood. You have to take that into you. And, you know, and it could be all, it could be all in our minds wrapped up here with us and Jesus and, and what Jesus is doing in me and what da-da-da-da, you know, and that, that, again, that focus always coming down. We're the central focus. We're the, we're the core of what this is about. But no, for you, for me, he has, it has to go this way here because he's going this way to the Father. And it's all leading in his mind and in his heart, not about himself. What do you think of that? Amen. Not about him. He's totally pure. He's totally with the Father. He's totally wanting you to be with the Father. The way, this is the way to the Father. And he's totally wanting that. You go, well, you, you know, somebody over here in the us, in the U.S., could say, well, you're just making this all about you, Jesus. You're just making this all about you. Eat your flesh and drink your blood. He's going, look, you need to do this or you're not going to have life in you and the life that the Father wants that will be raised up at the last day. You, you know, it's like, you're going to have to trust me on this, that this is the way. But it doesn't look like the way. It sounds, folks, we're so used to these scriptures for Jesus to say, eat my flesh and drink my blood, is scandalous. The one thing that was always said from the very beginning of Israel was, do not drink the blood. Anybody remember that? So it was the very beginning, and it was always a, a deal. So Jesus shows up and goes, drink my blood. They go, and you know the response, don't you? Yeah, yeah. And so it was, you know, there, it's, it's uh, we go, well, why did God say don't drink the blood? Because any other drinking of the blood would have been taken in another life than what was supposed to be the one, the son. He's, he's not wanting blood drinkers or vampires. He's wanting the son in us. And he's wanting that that son that is in us to be broken, to be uh, selfless to the core, even unto death, even unto to, uh, spilling your blood. And instead of looking at the cross and going, you know, one way is to look at, you know, we can look at the cross and we can see Jesus bleeding, you know, he's the crown of thorns and then the thing in his side and the nails and all that. We're looking at Jesus there we're going, this is yucky. I don't really like blood movies. You know, this is, this is, you know, and, and a lot of people are abhorrent to that and they don't believe in Jesus because of that, you know, too much about blood. Or we can stand there and we can look at the cross and we can go, oh, the blood of Jesus. I just want to put it all over me. You know, I'm the doorpost and put it on me and it'll chase off the, you know, like, like Passover. It wasn't, it was, it was a shadow in, in Exodus. The real was not put it on you so that your sins will be forgiven and the, and the destroyer will pass over you. 
The real deal was to put it in you, eat this lamb, drink its blood, and, and we'll explain, obviously not tonight because it's already time to quit, but we'll explain this further about the, the flesh, uh, eat his flesh and drink his blood to see it in light of um, uh, why it was this way when Jesus spoke and it wasn't that way back then. Because shadows are never a clear picture of the real. That's why we call them shadows. They're never a clear picture of the real. So, he said don't, he didn't just say don't drink blood. He meant don't drink any other blood but the life of the poured out son. The one who's self-giving. The one who, in, in the purest form, was selfless. So that we, because, you know, you have to draw that cross right through the middle of the sun here for that to take place. If there's not a death going on in this sun, what, what's being poured into us isn't going to be that same spirit. You see what I mean? There has to be a, the ongoing. See, because the cross is not just an event. The cross is not something that happened 2,000 years ago. The cross, you know, what made Jesus' cross any different from the two guys on either side? They're all on wood. They're all cross-shaped and everything. Why wasn't theirs holy? Jesus' cross wasn't holy. Jesus was what made it the, anything worthwhile. And the thing that made it worthwhile in Jesus was that he totally was selfless in it. He, ha he was not seeking his own gain. He said that, but the Father's. You see? All right. So, so what would be the point to pass down? Well, we'd say, well, you know, see this, we're so, we're so wrong. We'd say, okay, we're drinking his blood because he's passing down holy blood from the Son of God. The Son of God's life is coming into me. Yeah, some weird, you know, Oh, that's what, and I've heard all kind of stuff about the blood and whatever. Let me tell you, it represents the very selfless, poured out, it's poured out blood. You know? And it's selfless to the core. And so if, if the cross, if this cross isn't working, this nature of selflessness isn't working in the sun, whatever's poured in us is going to be invalid. It's going to be halfway. It's going to be not it. Do you see that? So, what does that say? It says it's selfless so that the Father will get what he wants. See, it always has to go up to someone else. It's always, well, who's going to, okay, so in this scenario, who's going to benefit? The Father? Yes or no? Yes. Us? Yes. Jesus? Not in this scenario, because this is about the Father, see? You understand? See? This is about the Father, so he's not supposed to. Well, you know, the, we saw in the story of Eliezer and uh, Abraham sending Eliezer, representing the Holy Spirit, and him, Father Abraham, that in that scenario, the son was the one who was going to gain. But they're all complete so that they can constantly cover and give for one another. And it's, it is, they, again, they never have to worry about the other. You don't get jealous. You don't, you know, see, jealousy comes when it's about you. See, jealousy comes when it's about you. But if, if, if it's about the Father, and then he's getting more than you, you go, praise God, see? And then we read in, what is it, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we go, well, you know, when one gets blessed, we all bless. One suffers, we all suffer. And we go, yeah, I'm going to do that. Well, unless it's somebody suffering that we don't like, and then we go, <laughs> praise God. They're, this is happening to them because they're evil, you know? You know, we got all this junk working in us. It's not a commandment. 1 Corinthians 12 is not a commandment. You say, well, it's a teaching on the body and how we should act. Good luck with that. Yeah. 
It comes from here. It comes from something that's eternal. It comes from something that was long before you and I were ever in existence or ever even thought of. It is a being that is unlike anybody on this planet and never has been. Even Adam and Eve in innocence were not this, clearly. Clearly. It's a being that wants, desires to share of that spirit. And, and so I, I'm, I'll try to end with this. So we have these things <clears throat> we call values, you know, and we, <clears throat> we, set up our, um, we set up our Bible schools, we set up our businesses, we set up, you know, we, we have values and, and we believe in we should love one another and we should uh, help one another and we should, and we believe in justice and, you know, so what I'm saying here is values that are not really innate in us. To do the right thing, to love people, to make sure that justice is, is you know, everybody's treated justly and fairly and all of that kind of stuff. And so, uh, so we, we set all that stuff up and that can never, that can never be. There is no, you know, democracy is the answer. <laughs> democracy is the answer? No. There is no system, there is no scheme. That's why, that's why 1 Corinthians chapter 1 is written, that he took the wise in their own conceits and he made a show of them openly in Colossians. And he showed them that their wisdom is foolish, even though it's the wisdom of this world and exalted and high and everyone who holds these things, we hold these truths to be self-evident. Evident, maybe, but we don't hold them good enough to do them to one another. But this, this being that we just call God, which conjures up wrong concepts of who he is innately, this being is worth, or shall I say, this being is worth um, pursuing. It's worth living according to his life. It's worth dying to gain. It's worth, um, well, everything. It's worth buying the field to get the treasure. Are you familiar with that parable? You know, I remember when I was in Bible school, and this is my second ending here, and a drink means I'm going to go on. When I was in Bible school, <clears throat> and it was also a church, and there were people who didn't like, you know, the way certain things were run and done and this and that. And there was, you know, generally a, a slight rumble underneath. And the, the people who had that rumbling in them, and I don't, I'm not talking about anybody here, I don't think that's, going on here. I'm just telling you this is my, my situation. Um, and the people who the rumblings were going on in always wanted to gain new rumblers. <laughs> they did. So they'd always try to, to talk to somebody about what's wrong, you know, and this isn't right, this isn't just, this isn't fair, this isn't. And uh, so they came to me and, you know, da -da -da -da, you know, this field has got dirt clods in it and it's got rocks in it and it's got weeds and poison ivy and all this junk in it and da da da, da. and I said it's also got treasure buried in it and I'm going to dig it out <laughs> and I'm going to buy the whole field so that I can get that treasure and they said no talking to him <laughs> <laughs> anyway Praise God. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Oh, man. So do I. I forgot that announcement. Okay. Yeah, I just, we have a, a Should we cover this or shut down? Or? Yeah, you can just turn that off. Go ahead. Why don't you come up here? <laughs>